Hello friends. Today I'm going to talk about the COVID-19 response that various governments have had. And I think it might have leaked out a little bit somehow, even though I usually hold my feelings very close to my myself. <laughs> but I think somehow I might have leaked it out this time that I'm not thrilled with how things have uh, how things have gone. I don't like the decisions that the governments are making, the uh, uh, home incarcerations and, and this whole thing. I'm not a not a fan of it. And I have a lot of very good friends that are, are of different mind than I am, and they think that the CDC and uh, local governments and everybody's just making great decisions and they're all saving our lives, and, and I thought it would be a, a good, honest thing for me to kind of give my my viewpoint. Uh, and, and my first big thing is, I don't know how bad COVID-19 is. I hear a lot of very smart people saying it's not that huge of a deal. Uh, yeah, it's a nasty little booger, but, you know, it might be a million people around the world or five million that die, but it's not it's not going to be a huge dent in the population or anything. Uh, in the United States, it's not like 30 million people are going to buy, die. You know, that would be 10% of the population. You know, it's not going to be that bad. Um, and, and then there are other people saying it's just the most most awful thing that's ever happened. And no matter what the costs are, in order for human civilization to continue, we have to ruin economies around the world and, and so on. And And so there are you know, well-meaning people on both sides and probably some not so well-meaning people on both sides that have offered opinions. And mine is simply that I don't know. I, I think that there are a lot of things out there that can hurt human critters. There's uh, riding a bicycle too fast. There are automobile collisions, overeating, overdrinking, um, juggling, throwing heavy balls up above your head and they uh, there are all kinds of things that can happen in life that'll that'll kill us because I mean, we're all going to die anyway we know that uh hopefully not until we're in our 70s or 80s or or whenever but you know we're all going to die at some point and i don't know about covid what i what i do know is that i have a certain set of principles that i've lived by for a long time and it's kind of a live and let live kind of thing uh it's a the, the idea that you get to choose what risks you're willing to take. I get to choose what risks I'm willing to take. Uh, since I've been a responsible breadwinner for our, our household, I don't take risks like I might have back when I had uh, free insurance from my company. Um, I, I couldn't afford, a few years ago especially, before we had such an incredible team of coaches, I was out on a range 28, 29 days a month, and it would have just been horrible for us, for me not to to be able to work. <clears throat> so because of that, um, I was very careful. I, I didn't go downhill mountain biking or, or skiing or paragliding or anything dangerous because it was just too high risk for what I chose. And that was my choice. And you could laugh at me and tell me that I'm, I'm being too cautious. Uh, I could mock you and say, I can't believe you're going skiing. That's backcountry skiing where the avalanches happen and people run into trees and you shouldn't take those kinds of risks. And and we could both argue back and forth for, for our perspective. But the truth is, it's my choice. It's your choice. You get to do what you want. And that's what it comes down to for me for the COVID-19. Uh, we all are going to see it differently. We're all going to want to have different, uh, we, we have different risk uh, levels of risk that we place it at. Some of us are going to say, this is horrible. I'm going to stay inside for the next six months and, and let my business go and have my mortgage, have the bank take my house back. And it's worth it because at least I'll be alive. And then other people will say, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to go out and live life and do what I want to do and whatever. And both of those people get to make that choice. And I think the excuse that's made anyway with COVID-19 is that if you do choose to go out, you're not just risking your life. You're also risking the lives of other people because if you get yourself sick and you get to the hospital first, once you get COVID uh, and the ventilator goes to you, then the other person won't have a, a ventilator to use. So we're using the, the excuse of the failure of the medical system to have enough equipment on hand for, for bad things happening uh, to change our, our behaviors. And it's not right to force your neighbor not to go mountain biking 
because the local hospital is running low on band-aids. Whether it's that insignificant or as serious as death from a nasty virus, um, let's let's really look at this from a moral, from a human rights standpoint. We do not, I, I believe, we do not have the, the moral right to force other people to lock themselves in their homes. We don't have the right to have them lose their businesses, their jobs, their, their whole economic, the stuff they've been building up for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. They're, we don't have a right to ruin their lives because we're worried that the government hospitals don't have enough Band-Aids or ventilators or whatever to handle everything. Um, yeah, I, I, I know that having your lungs full of fluid and drowning in them would really suck, and I hope it doesn't happen to me. I hope it never happens to anybody, but the truth is it will. It'll happen to at least 100,000 people or a million or whatever, and it's a nasty little virus. But at what point do we say, even if half the world's population was going to die, at what point do we take away natural human rights from everyone else? We have different lines that we draw in the sand, and, well, I don't think I draw a line. I think I say that, that morality is morality. And if I don't have the right to to protect one person from something nasty, like I don't have the right to say you can't go mountain biking because you might fall and skin your knee, if that's, a, if that's just a preference, then I can change that. But if it's a moral principle that I don't use force, I don't grab somebody and say, you can't do this, um, I don't do that if I have a different risk level than them. Just because I'm really, 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 really scared of COVID-19 doesn't give me a right to use force to stop someone else from behaving according to their risk preferences. Um yeah, that's 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 kind of my standpoint. And I'm not going to call a neighbor in because they visited with their dying grandmother across the lawn uh, or all these other rats that are calling calling people in. I I know they think that they are doing good and saving lives. But the, too many people have been harmed for too many thousands of years by people trying to save everybody else. Mind your own business. If you're really scared of COVID-19, stay home. I mean, it sounds like that's the safest bet. If, on the other hand, you've worked really hard to to buy a house, and if you don't go to work, you don't open your business up, <clears throat> you're not going to be able to pay your mortgage, and you're going to lose your house. Your employees are going to lose their livelihoods. Um, all kinds of bad stuff's going to happen. And if you look at all of that and you say, eh, it's worth going and opening my my restaurant up and, and doing this, geez, you should be able to do that. Like... I, I can't imagine how I could live with myself. If I imposed on you and told you you couldn't go out and you live your life according to your risk preferences, your risk tolerances, like how can a human being do that to another human being? I can see how the politicians can do it. But how can a human being do that to another human being? It's just, it strikes me as being wrong. So I, I just thought you might be curious about my standpoint and yeah, there it is. Uh, look forward to seeing what your comments are below. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Where am I? Where am I off base here?